Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of the other collection types and in uh, particular we're going to talk about the maps uh, collection type. Now maps are a little bit different than the other collections that we have uh, discussed. Um, one of the big differences between them is that they are uh, they have parametric polymorphism but they're parametric on two different types. So let's look at what we can do with a map. So we can build a map. Now one of the things about maps is that they associate a key with a value. And so let's do this. I'll first use the long syntax for doing this. three comma three. Okay. That is one way of building a map. And so the map takes arguments that are tuples. There are two tuples. The first value is the key. The second value is the value that that key relates to. So in this case I've made a a map and note that once again maps exist in both the mutable and immutable form and by default you get the immutable form and this is a map from string to int. You'll notice that when it prints it out it uses this arrow notation and in fact most of the time when you are creating maps that is what you will do. You will use an arrow notation instead of the standard tuple notation. Um, <clears throat> the reason for doing this is basically because it's easier to read, it's easier to see what's going on. This tells you that the, the string 1 is associated with the number 1, string 2 is associated with the number 2, etc. So the primary reason for using a map is so that you can look things up. And you can look them up quickly using the key value. So if we look for the value uh, string 1, we get back the value 1. Um, the keys basically form a set. So if I take res1 and I add to it two five, <coughs> you'll note that my two which went to two has been replaced by now the string two goes to the value five. Now why would you want to to use a map? When you used, so for sets, all you're doing is you, you either say something is there or something is not there. For uh, sequences, you have a bunch of values and they are, in some ways, they're, you keep track of them by their index. The index is the way that you store them, it's the way that you look things up. A map gives you the ability to store and look things up by something other than an integer index. Now even if you want, even if your key value is an int, there can still be advantages to having a map. So for example, let's say that I had something uh, that looked like this. So I was keeping powers of 10. Um, actually let's go with I can even do a map of int to int. Anyone notice the trend on this? Yeah, we're I'm doing log base ten uh, here. Now, if I had decided to keep this as a uh, as an array my in, or as an array or some other sequence my indices here were 1 10 100 1000 10000 there's a lot of blank space between 1 and 10000 here um, and all of that blank space would have been wasted if i used a sequence but in a map even if my key values are are ints it can still be beneficial because it gives me a fast way to look things up and it only uses the amount of memory that's associated with the the number of things that I'm storing. 
technically many of the uh, implementations might use twice as much as, as what we're storing. But, you know, if I were to actually store this in an array, I'd be using almost 10,000 times as much as, as what I'm storing. Uh, definitely, let's see, I have five values and I'd have 10,000 elements. So I'd be uh, using 2,000 times as much storage as what I actually needed. <coughs> Other thing to note, order does not matter. Okay? This is not the order that I gave the things into it. That's very much like a set and then I can look things up in here and get back the values. A possible usage for this would be, let's say we had a case class for a student and our student has a name which is a string and I'll just say they have a grade which is an int and we would probably have lots and lots of other things I could have a map that keeps track of students by their name. Um, so let's actually, let's make a sequence. Uh, uh, students equals a sequence of student mark 90 student John 80 student Jane 95 okay and the thing about keeping it this way so I could if I want to look up someone by their name I can do something like students dot find underscore dot name equals equals John Okay, I can do that here and it gives me back as an option. Uh, but it would actually be nice to have, and so one thing about that is that find technically has to run through everything until it finds the thing that you're looking for. So if I had a, a, a very large sequence here, find on a sequence is order in and that can be very inefficient. Uh, the map typically has a much more efficient implementation for finding things, especially when you have a large number of them. So I'm going to make a student map and that's going to be equal to, and then the question is, well, how do we do something like this? Uh, one way to do this would be to take the map and what I'm going to pass into this map is uh, students dot, and now I'm going to use the map function where s goes to s.name arrow s. And then to make it so that it takes this as a set of, as a bunch of tuples as arguments instead of just as a single sequence, I can do that. And you can see here that I got an immutable map of string to student. And now I can take stu map and look up mark Oops. And I very quickly get back uh, the, the student record that is associated with that name. Um, let's see, so so there is a to map uh, method that you can use. Now it has to have a tuple. So this would actually be the student map s rocket s dot name arrow s that will give me back uh, the same type of result um, and this this version is a little bit more brief and might be more readable of course you can't take just any sequence and convert it to a map you need to have something that is a, a sequence of two tuples uh, in order for this to work uh, so that's kind of a, a quick rundown of, of maps. It turns out maps are remarkably useful. We're going to use maps significantly more than we use, say, sets. Maybe not quite as much as we use sequences, uh, but we'll use them for things like we need to be able to look stuff up by a string. Um, pretty much anywhere in our project where, where we want to look something up by a string and have it be efficient, it can be good to, to make a map.
of those things. So in the next video, we'll do exactly that. We'll come back and we will start using these collections to add some more features or to clean up things inside of our project. So we'll see you again soon.